Main event time here in the market hall in Abu Ghraveni. An electric atmosphere here on Gethin's hometown. But Sean Yaxley from North Wales has brought an army of fans down. Here on Gethin in the maroon coloured shorts. Sean Yaxley in the yellow shorts. Celtic super lightweight title up for grabs. Your commentators, myself, Kieran Gibbons, and K.O. Camry's Dewey Fowell. Looks like these two are straight down to action as well, Kieran. Also up for grabs tonight, the IBO title. A title that will give the winner a good ranking with their organisation. They want to move on to bigger and better things, which no doubt they do. Both boxers wearing punches gloves as well. Cleto Reyes. And Yaxi looks like he's in there trying to get a stoppage. He's been really aggressive. So already, already landed some solid punches. There was a left hook that really got Gethin's attention a moment ago. Two more there. Anthony Crawler in, in Yaxi's corner calling him forward. Just looking at them in, in the ring here in front of us, Yaxley looks a lot bigger and sturdier than Gethin. Yeah, this being at Super Welterweight 2 divisions, above where Gethin won his Welsh title, Yaxley will have that natural size advantage. Of course, would have rehydrated from yesterday's weigh-in too. But in fairness to him, Kieran, I think it's his skills that have got him off to a really solid start here. Oh, nice right hand from Yaxley, timed it really well. And again. Yaxley from Riffin in North Wales. A big Wrexham fan. It's a good time to be involved oh, in Wrexham's court. Get catches him. That shot shook Yaxley. Really good punch from Kieran Gethin with a left hook, I think. Oh, another left hook. This is a great response from Gethin. That has stopped Yaxley in his tracks. And with those shots, Kieran Gethin has laid down a marker, I think. Sean Yaxley was having a pretty good round up until that point. One thing Gethin said in the build-up to this is it's a long time since Sean Yaxley's had a competitive fight since his last amateur days over five years ago. And at least in a ring, he will not have been hit like that for a very long time. 
maybe in training, but never in his pro career under the lights. Wow, what an opening round. And as Debbie was saying there, this is Sean Yaxley's 13th pro fight. He's been a pro now for several years. And uh, that live competition against guys who are fighting, who want to win, could be a factor. I mean, it's difficult when you're, you're matching guys and, and bring them through the ranks. When do you let them off the reins, so to speak? And up until this point, just looking at Sean Yaxi's record, he's only fought journeyman. He's never fought a guy with a winning record. Yeah, this is, of course, his step up. Everyone's got to make a, that step up at one point. Kieran Gethin's step up was against Tony Dixon for the Welsh welterweight title a couple of years ago. And he equipped it, he equipped himself very well on that occasion. So it can be done. So here we go into the second round. Brilliant atmosphere here in the Market Hall in Abergavenny, the hometown of Kieran Geffen. A really close opening round. Reasons for both to be confident from that opening round, I think. I just wonder though, psychologically, will Kieran Geffen have had the upper hand with the way he hurt Yaxley? Yeah, that was a, that was a standout moment, wasn't it? And it's interesting because they kind of mirrored each other, each other's own stances up until that point. But getting a little bit quicker to the punch when it mattered up close as they traded, and they're back to mirroring each other's stances here. Yeah, actually, a little bit more cautious this round. That was a good left hook to the body. He tried to move up to the head of the right hand as well. I think it just went on the back of the head of Gethin. One interesting thing to note as well, this is a very large ring, it's, 20, it's a 24-footer, which you don't see very often, and, and Gethin possibly making use of that, just edging backwards a little bit more than Sean Yaxley. Geffen pumping out his jab, not all those are landing. Again, another close round. Not going to be easy to score. Geffen just trying to fend off Yaxley from range with those pouring jabs, not, not really landing but stopping Yaxley from co just completely pouring forward. And then when he holds his feet, Gethin gets two or three shots off like that and skirts around to the sides. He's boxing very cleverly in this round, Gethin. Just doing enough to win, I think. Although it's very close. Another big left hook. Yaxley's hurt again. It's big, it's looping, it's around the side, and it just seems to not be in his eye line in those moments. Geffen moving when he's throwing his jab, making a difficult target for any counter punches coming back in return. Kieran Gethin just swipes off his shoulder there and looks almost contemptuously towards Sean Yaxley as the round ended. One thing to note, Sean Yaxley's usual trainer for tonight, Joe Gallagher, not able to be here. He's with Natasha Jonas, who's just become a two-weight world champion in Manchester. So not here in person, but we've got the spirit of him almost. There's, a, there's the full crew from Champs Camp, Anthony Crawler, Marcus Morrison, Macaulay McGowan, and they need to summon that spirit of Joe Gallagher, one of the best trainers we've got in the country, to get Yaxley through these tough opening moments. Yeah, not having your number one trainer, if you like, or your head coach in the corner when you're in the, the toughest fight of your life, in the deepest waters. That could be a key factor in the result of this fight.
So into the third. Yaksu leads off the left hook. Gethin fires back with his flurry of shots. Yeah, making him pay. Yaxley just held his feet there, squeezed his guard, didn't actually throw anything. So it was target practice for Kieran. Ar Kieran Gethin around the sides and up the middle. If Yaxley's going to come into come into range, he needs more of this. Gethin said on the, in the build-up to this contest that is his experience that would make the difference. And uh, you can, and you can see that Gethin is the more comfortable person in there. I remember the these two have sparred as well on the Welsh national squad as amateurs. They know each other. Might have been many years ago, but they've, they've got some experience of each other. Good catch and counter there from Yaxley. No, that's something we see often from Joe Gallagher's boxes. <laughs> Even though the records between the two fighters are fairly similar, it's Kieran Gethin who's fought the much better opponents to date. He's been in those tough 50-50 fights. Good job from Yaxley. And he's taken a lot of confidence from that as well. Yaxley's not really, you know, put a foot round in his pro career. He's not lost a round. But it's different when you're in there with someone who, who wants to fight, wants to punch you as much as you want to punch them. Kieran Gethin rolls under the big hook from Yaxley. Kieran Gethin using this big ring to his advantage. Some really effective jabs to the body there from Yaxley. And he landed a right hook as well. Let him go! Let him go! Seeing Yaxley Tried that a couple of times there, just dipping to his right to slip the jab. Didn't come back with anything on two occasions, and on the third time, fight a right, right straight over the top of it. Yeah, he's tried that shot a few times now, hasn't he? He actually just the two stoppage wins of his career so far, of his 12 victories, no defeats. Death in 12 wins. Two defeats and two draws. Considering Yaxley was buzzed in the first and second rounds, I think he's actually really, this is a really solid session for him, yeah. Yeah, he's come back well. He's just starting to use his jab a lot more as well. And his movement, his upper body movement, has just pulled Kieran Gethin back onto the front foot. And look at the body language. Both fighters seem happy with their performance in that round. Um, just going to bring Richie Gardner in here now. Oh, we're not going to bring Richie in, he's not quite ready. Uh, how are you scoring this fight so far, Richie? Yeah, shaping up to be a very interesting fight. Um, Gething, obviously, is doing very well in uh, just little bursts. Uh, Yaxley is he's putting the pressure on, he's working just a little bit harder than Gething. I'd like to see a little bit more work from Gething, get himself just entrenched in the fight just a little bit more. Yaxley's just working that little bit harder, don't you think? Well, I mean, both guys, I mean, I think Kieran Gethin has almost been forced to work at a higher pace. I mean, can he keep it going for 10 rounds? I mean, how, how we've actually got the score so far, Rich? Um, I, I, I don't think that Kieran will thank me for this, but I, I've actually got him a round down. I, I think the second round and the third round were relatively close. You, you could have scored it uh, perhaps for either one, depending upon what you're looking for. But ultimately, what I was really looking at was the work rate of Yaxley. Um, and, and Gethin, when he does score, he scores quite big. Um, but, you know, I, I'm just not sure it's enough to be edging the rounds. And just uh, to note for our viewers, they are the unofficial scorecard of Richie Garner, trainer and manager. His scorecard has no uh, result on the contest. Uh, thank God, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it's entirely reliable. <laughs> but uh, I think it's just an indication of how close a contest it is. Oh, it's an, it's an incredibly close contest. I mean, both boxers really go in for it. Yaxley's been hurt quite badly twice. Um, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long way to the final bell, and I think the Kieran's just been very, very careful. He doesn't blow himself out. Yaxley hurt in the first, hurt a little bit in the second. What I'd like to see Kieran do is just roll underneath uh, Yaxley's jab a little bit and come up with a big left up, because I think those are the kind of shots that were causing um, him to be, you know, feel it a bit and, and, and put a dent in Yaxley. 
Yaxley dropping his hands now, the round by his waist. Yeah, he's trying to fire that jab from his waist. He's just firing upwards. Um, you know, I, I, I maybe throw the right hand in over the top, just get your distance, just touch, touch, touch with that jab, and then throw that big right hand over the top from Gething. I'm not sure his markings over the right eye of Kieran Gething, is it? I'm not sure if it's just a shadow. The copy um, another jab there, Gething. Yeah, he's, I mean, you know, I, I don't I don't think he's got too much, by the way, of um, being marked up. Kieran doesn't usually mark up too much in any event. I mean, you know, he's had um, a distinguished amateur career and, you know, he's quite experienced in the pros now. I don't think he's ever been hurt too much, marked up too much. Um, you know, he, he's, he's, he's looking pretty good in there, I think. I'd just like to see a bit, bit more work from him and get those shots off. Use that jab as a range finder. Maybe work a bit harder on the inside. I mean, he's stepping in, he's stepping in, he's stepping in. Perhaps he's just looking for that big shot all the time because now he knows he can hurt you, actually. Perhaps he's just looking for that big shot all the time. I mean, you know, he used the jab as a range finder there, threw the right hand over the top, but um, the Yaks was always moving, uh, you know, away from that shot. But he gets caught with one right there. Boxers standing in the middle of the ring, trading shots. The crowd all around us going wild. Yeah, yeah actually, actually took a big shot there, you know, seemed to stumble a little bit, but rather than getting back on the jab and staying on the back foot, he's, he's decided to stand and trade with Kieran. There's been very little since that little exchange, but, um, but they're back at it now. Yeah, actually, actually looking again. for that right hand again. Yep. He's been Just encouraged fainting. by his corner to push forward. Fainting with the left and trying to score with the big right. Nothing really catching, Gethin cleanly though. I don't think those two jabs just landed there, thrown from the waist. Last 10 seconds coming up, Gethin needs to do something or I think Yaxley has just edged this round again. And over to the indomitable figure of my good friend, Dowie. I mean, Richie's got uh, Yaxley a couple ahead there. We, how are you seeing it? I've got a dead square. Um, I gave Kieran Gethin the first and the second rounds, Yaxley the third and the fourth. I think that fourth round is kind of how Yaxley's corner will want him to fight the fight, being a bit quicker on his feet. But there are still moments where he's up close, he's trading, his, his chin is high and his hands are low. And they're the moments that Gethin took advantage of early on. Th they're still there now for him, but Yaxley, in between that, is just managing to take the play away from him with his quicker feet. Yeah, I think what Yaxley's doing now is, is working things behind his jab, whereas earlier in the contest he was a bit reckless jumping in and Kieran Gethin almost caught him as he jumped in. Whereas now the pace has slowed a little bit, seems to be suiting Yaxley a little bit more. Although the fact, obviously, you and Richie both know you're boxing inside out, and the fact you can't agree on the scorecards should tell the viewers what type of fight this is. Yeah, there's no clear winner, and I don't know if he's coming across on on the camera is the same, but it's an absolutely electric atmosphere here. Kieran Gethin just shook his head there as shots from Yaxley just fall short. Kieran Gethin boxing behind a really tight guard. Just brings his hands up to the side of his face every time he closes the range as Yaxley's defence is loose. Kieran Gethin's got former world champion Gavin Reese in his corner for this contest. Very experienced fighter and trainer. Been there, done it all as a pro. Let him go! Let him go! Kieran Gethin being encouraged to let it go. Certainly a slow pace to this run so far. Kieran Gethin implied in the build-up of this contest that it would be the later stages of the fight where he would win it. He, he implied that he'd been in the deep waters before, whereas Sean Yaxley had not. Heads coming together there. Come on, let's go, let's go! I think it's been, a, it's been an intelligent switch of tactics from Yaxley. Nice right hook from Yaxley. Just the way he, he's relaxing on the back foot now, his weight is on his back foot as well, and he's got Kieran in that crouch, slowly coming forward, and Yaxley's speed of foot has been able to take advantage. And while it is a risk throwing that jab from the waist, it, it does seem to be working. It's landed a lot more as the contest has gone on. And of course, against the high guard, you won't see, you won't see that shot coming from such a low angle. 
And it's uh, Sean Yaxley now who's, who's using the ring, moving around the outside of it. And there we see that jab again. John Yaxley moving around the wing and then waiting for his moment to plant his feet to land his shot. Is Kieran Gethin looking a little bit frustrated in this round, do you think, Dewey? Yeah, he's a step oh, behind, isn't he? Right it's, it, it is certainly Yaxley's feet that are making this round relatively easy to score. He's a step or two ahead, picking away with his jab, and able to evade anything, that, anything that's really come his way in this round. That's, that's, five, that's five rounds down as well, and this fight is flying by. As Kieran Gethin goes back to his corner, he salutes his fans. What sort of advice do you think Gavin Reese is giving Kieran Gethin in the corner at the moment, Dewey? I think I know we keep going on about the feet, but I think he just needs to he needs to speed his feet up. Um, he actually is is on the back foot now, but he's comfortable there. Kieran Gethin needs to get him to the edge of the edge of the ring and keep him there. The, dis the, the thing that's going to go against him here is the size of the ring. It's a 24 foot ring, it's enormous. So there's lots of space for, for a natural counter puncher like Yaxi to play with. I think Gethin in the first two rounds was able to take advantage of, of Yaxley coming into trade. And the distance between them almost didn't matter in those moments. It does now. into the sixth round of what's a very close contest. Is Sean Yaxley from North Wales just starting to pull away? Yaxley's actually, his, his output, although we don't have the stats here to hand, his output has actually probably dropped as the fight has gone on, but the shots he's landing are standing out and he's preventing Gethin from landing his shots just with his clever footwork. And there is the element here as well, Kieran, that we're literally in Kieran Gethin's hometown. His house is a mile away. Probably walked to the arena today. A lot of his friends and family here. He co promotes this show with Shadowbox Promotions. And you'd never want to take it for granted that, you know, although you think you're, you're out boxing a hometown boxer, we know boxing, we know how boxing is. And uh, I'm glad you touched on it there, Dewey. I mean, as you mentioned, Kieran Gethin's been heavily involved in promoting his fight alongside Mo Pryor. Um, I just wonder whether he was too involved or has been too involved. It's very stressful promoting boxing with all the other things that go around it, all the things that happen in the background while training for a, a big title fight as well. Yeah, I agree, especially at this level as well, where, you know, we're at the grassroots small hall level. Usually, you know, promotions are working with a small amount of staff to pull everything together. Kieran's a very ambitious man. You know, he should be commended for bringing, you know, a really meaningful fight to uh, to Wales. An all Wales fight as well. But, you know, it's, it's no easy task at all Both to do that and prepare for a fight. There. And let's be, let's be honest, Kieran Gethin could have probably fought anyone tonight and had a good crowd here, but he's chosen to fight a really tricky, difficult opponent in a 50-50 fight. Kieran's talked about in the build-up that he only sees himself having one more year in boxing. And he doesn't want to waste any time with, uh, you know, with any safe fights. He, won't fight, he wants fights that people remember. And I think so far so good. This is a fight people will remember tonight. He actually just getting warned for the elbow. I don't think it's anything deliberate. Oh, it was a good looping right hand from Gethin. He actually was moving away, so I think the, he took the sting out of it. Let him go, let him go now! Come on, Kieran! Let him go! This mobile style of Yaxley has proven difficult for Kieran Gethin to pin down.
should be noted as well what a good win this would be for North Welsh Boxing a year ago Jerome Warburton came down underdog against Morgan Jones for the Welsh middleweight title pulled off the upset great win he was an amateur stable mate and an early pro stable mate of Sean Yaxley and this win would be uh, just as big if not bigger yeah, definitely it would be a huge boost for boxing in North Wales, which has probably been the shadow of boxing in South Wales for many years, it's fair to say. What sort of advice do you think Yaxley's getting here in the corner? More of the same, I presume? Yeah, definitely more of the same. The corner the corner seem, you know, pretty happy and pretty content with what he's doing so far. He's recovered from a bit of a torrid start. Should be commended for that. All I would say is every round is crucial in this fight, I think. We've seen it so many times in boxing where a boxer thinks they're winning or the corner thinks they're winning and they've taken their foot off the gas, maybe given the last round away and they've it's cost them the fight or whether it ends up a draw or sometimes even a loss. Yeah, it was soon to be. Yaxley's done one eight-rounder in the past but never been beyond that. So the ninth and the tenth in the Celtic title fight being the championship rounds. That's where Gethin thinks he'll prevail. Nice right hook to the body from Yaxley. Gethin's his feet just don't seem quick enough to close the distance and keep him within punching range. No, I would say though, I think Yaxley's standing a lot closer this round than he than he has for the last few. I wonder is that by choice or is that just because he's feeling the pace of the fight? I do think Gethin is stepping across him when he circles. We saw in the last round that looping right hand was was a result of Gethin trying to step across him as he actually circles away. But to answer your question, it's probably a bit of both, isn't it? I mean, he actually is using his feet so intelligently in this fight. But remember, we are only watching this from one point of view here at ringside. Oh, nice job from Yaxley. The judges might be seeing something different. We've got the crucial difference between Wales title fights and Celtic title fights is instead of a scoring referee, we've got three scoring judges at ringside. I mean, any title fight, I think, should have the three judges, but uh, that's, that's a, a debate for a different day. Yeah. We've seen plenty of Welsh title fights that uh, should have had three judges. Let's go. Gethin misses with a hook. And now Yaxley's corner men are telling their fighter to push forward. Yeah, and he does need to take advantage because whilst, the, you know, whilst he is avoiding Gethin's work, he's never, in this round at least, he's not really made, he's made a miss, he's not really made, made him pay. Yeah, he's not much landed really. I mean, I guess he might even be winning this round just from work rate. Yeah, chipping away slowly. And Yaxi is just flying across the ring like an ice skater, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, a couple of laps in this round. I think this is one of Sean's more negative rounds of the fight so far. The movement earlier that we saw had a number of jabs, you know, before, during and after it. With this round, we've just seen him skirt around the outsides for the for the majority of it this once again not an easy round to score and getting under a couple of jabs that could have been a getting round and uh, just going to bring in Richie Gardner Richie Gardner trainer and manager how are you seeing this fight Richie um, to be honest with you, you can see that Yaxley's um, had a little bit of success early doors and I think that um, he's stolen a couple of rounds and I think he's just trying to keep it long now uh, and try to steal the fight by making sure that he keeps getting on the jab long term and, and just tries to close it out, you know, nicking the odd round here and there and perhaps stealing a close points decision. Um, how about yourself? I mean, I, I'm not scoring it round by round, but just uh, up until the last round, I, I was getting the impression that Yaxley was uh, winning the fight, but... I mean, he actually used a lot of energy there, just moving around the ring without ever stopping to throw shots. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, you know, it does. Uh, he, he has expended a tremendous, tremendous amount of energy, uh, uh, making sure that he worked the outside of the ring and 
Um, let's just see now if he's got the stamina to close out these last three rounds. I mean, how have you got it on the cards now, Rich? Um, I, I've got Yaxley one, maybe two up. Um, you know, I think just needs to close that distance, and w when he does, he needs to go to work. Um, you know, if he actually, he actually's got a choice, then he can he can hold or he can engage. And you can see that he doesn't want to engage because when he has in the first two rounds, Gethin's hurt him. And if he holds, then of course it puts the um, it puts the referee in a position whereby he's got to make some decisions. So still all the fight though, was a good shot. Both fighters loaded up in hooks there. Absolutely, yeah. Great uppercut on the inside from Gething and uh, Yaxley returns with a left hook as he comes out. Both fighters similar age, Kieran Gething 29, Sean Yaxley 27. It, it would be lovely if now that he's just sat in the pocket a little bit more, Yaxley Gething engaged a little bit more and really let his hands go. Oh, nice right hand from Yaxley. I think Gething was more caught with his feet together there than actually hurt, but actually is definitely stepping on the gas a little bit, working the jab a little bit more, letting his right hand go. But, you know, Gething's responding in kind. I think Yaxley's corner man must have read him the riot act in between the rounds because he's fighting with different tactics. In this round, he's more aggressive, he's planting his feet. He's actually trying to force Gething back. Yeah, he's definitely planting his feet a little bit more. I mean, when he was, as you say, when he was on his bike and he was um, using the corners of the ring and, and sliding along the ropes, they were actually screaming for him to come forward then. So, you know, I, I think perhaps they think that their man has got the, um, the ability to deal with Gething, but he gets caught marauding forward then with a, a lovely left hook from Gething and he's punished a little bit for his, um, for his aggression. And there was a little shake of the head from Gething. That was a good body shot from Yaxley, though. Yeah, right hand over the top. And he's looking to score with that right again. Oh, oh a lovely, lovely little combination, Gethin. yeah. Two, two three-punch combination, all uppercuts on the inside. Nice scoring shots from Gethin there. Oh, lovely right hand from Yaxley. Snaps the head of Gethin back. Gethin going back in a straight line, leaves his chin up in the air. And, and of course, Yaxley enjoyed throwing that right hand then. He's caught with a jab as well. Yaxley's fans to my right-hand side are going crazy. Along with Yaxley's corner men. Gethin needs to slip under that jab and throw the left hook over the top because when he sometimes throws the jab, he actually, he, he can sometimes drop that right hand to chest level. He just needs to roll underneath that jab, come up with a big left hook, catch Yaxley when he's uh, leaning backwards. He's put a lot into this round, Sean Yaxley. He certainly has, yeah. The most he aggressive has. he's been for quite a while. Left hook over the top again from Gethin. Doesn't really, doesn't really trouble Yaxley, to be fair. Last 10 seconds here, Yaxley's looking to expose Gething on the ropes and maybe just close out the round well. Very close round, quite even. How have you got that, Kieran? Another excellent round. I mean, I'd give up to Yaxley if I was scoring it. I think he just uh, landed the better shot. He was the more aggressive. Widening the margin a little bit, and of course, I'll pass over to my good friend Dowie. Kieran Gethin breathing very heavily in the corner, as you'd expect. I mean, it's been a frantic pace in this contest. Another close round there, Dewey. I mean, how did you score that one? I thought it was very close. You're right, Kieran. I think the standout moments where the biggest difference was made was those two, those two straight right hands from Yaxley. Uh, going into the ninth round, I've got him two rounds ahead, 77 points to 75. But... There's been, let's be honest, there's been a couple of swing rounds in there as well, so... And a know. lot, a lot as well, I mean, it could come down just to how you score a fight, and if you favour several heavy shots, if you think that scores more than 10 jabs, for example, then you probably score the fight for Yaxley. Yeah. If you favour the more jabs, you probably go for Gethin. Good start to the round from Gethin. And this is the time of the fight where Kieran Gethin felt that he'd start to take over. This is where he thought he'd be able to take Sean Yaxley into deep waters. Sean Yaxley never previously been past the eighth round. This is effectively, you know, uncharted territory for him. Not to say he can't do it, but he's not done it before. This is the first time under the lights, as they say. Lovely jab from Yaxley. That jab's been a real weapon as well, hasn't it? We've seen on the undercard, boxers use their jab, but you know, just to touch the distance, just to find the range. Yaxley snapped it at points in this fight. It's been a weapon for him. 
And he's thrown it now from the shoulder as opposed to from the waist, which he was doing earlier as well. A couple of jabs and a hook drives Gethin back. I think more off balance than hurt, but you get the sense, you know, Kieran's creeping forward now, Kieran Gethin, and he. he I think he feels like he might have to take more risks here. He actually circled off the ropes, lovely back into the centre of the ring. Fighters stand in just in front of our commentary position, trade in shots. A big cheer goes up from the Axley fans. He's brought the real army down from Rhythm and North Wales for this contest. 130 odd mile journey down through mid Wales. Jackson's hands again drop into his waist. That jab of Yaxi is a brilliant weapon. You can see just waiting for his moment to fire up as Gethin commits himself. You can equally see Keith. There, there, he's just waiting for it, you can see it. Sorry to interrupt you there, Debbie. No, that's fine, just saying you can equally see it, you know, with nine rounds in, and they're both, both very alert. They don't appear to be fatigued. And they're still thinking their way through this fight, but we've got one left to go. Richie, sum up before we go into this last round. What the, what things are, who, how, who you see is winning it, and what each fighter's got to do. Quickly. Sorry, Kieran, let's go again. Yeah, can you just sum up? what each fighter has to do to win this contest going into this final round, briefly. I, I thought the Yaxi looked really good in that round. Um, he was far more willing to engage, far more willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Gethin. I think Gethin now probably needs a stoppage. Um, he won't thank me for that. We're here, we're in Abbott Venny Market Hall. We're in front of his home crowd. Um, he's the home fighter, but ultimately, I think Yaxi's just outworked him a little bit. Some of the better quality work has come from Gethin, but for me, it's just not quite enough. Um, how do you feel? I, I agree with you, but I also feel that you know, it's really close. The margins are very close and, and what you like is, uh, it, you know, depends what the judges are looking for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, and if you're looking for aggression um, and, and the meaningful shots, then of course you're going to be scoring for Gething. And if you're looking for the smarter boxing, some crisp shots from the outside and controlling things with the jab, then, then of course you're going to be scoring for Yaxley. But it's definitely been an interesting contest. It's definitely got the imagination of the uh, the crowd roused, and you know, I think that um, Yaxley's crowd have been exceptionally vociferous, and uh, they certainly thrown their all behind him. Yeah, these two Welsh warriors have put an amazing fight up tonight here in Abergavenny Market Hall for all these fans. A great atmosphere. Yeah, to be fair, you know, there's great support for both fighters. Um, what I want to see is absolute commitment going into the final rounds now, and. You know, we really want to see who wants it. Great, great shot from, from Geth in there. Literally just flushes against the, the, the whiskers of Yaxley. And if that had landed clean, it'd be interesting to see where that would have taken him. I think just working in behind the jab, just using it as a range finder. There's that jab again from Yaxley. Nice jab from Yaxley again. Firing it from his waist, and here it comes again. I think as the fight has gone on, that's been the, the weapon that's stood out the most, and there we see it again. Absolutely. Jab for jab there, but um, but Yaxley's is a bit more, bit more crisp. It just seems when Yaxley's jab lands, you can see the physical effect on Gethin. It's like yeah. he moves his head. Yeah, he's, he's pushing him back a little bit. He's a bit more crisp, a um, bit sharper with the jab, definitely. Gethin yeah, using his jab more as a rangefinder than, than, than an instrument to cause damage, you know? Kieran Gethin to his credit, he's fighting right to the very end. 
still trying to get the victory. Little touches, little feints, and, and of course, nice left hook there as he actually just spins off the ropes. Looking for that left hook again. He actually keeps firing that jab from his waist, catching Gething. And he actually takes the opportunity as Gething pushes him back towards the ropes just to hold and push him back, just walk him back. Which is, of course, the right thing to do against, you know, a fighter like Keown who's going to want to work on the inside. Sean Yaxi now his hands back down by his waist. I'd love to see what happens if Gething did fire one of those big left hooks and catches him nicely because Yaxi's chin is hanging nice and wide. He's, he's gulping in air as he, as he throws his shots. Um, you know, if, if Gething just manages to score one of those left hooks, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Gething keep on putting the pressure on. He actually trying on to get his that bike again, using the ropes, literally um, using every square into the ring. Last few moments. Well, what's been a great contest. Gethin is showing his frustration with the tactics from Yaxley. And there's Absolutely. the final bell. Final bell, very close fight. I think Yaxley's just stolen it. The thoughts on the, the result of this one, Derry, is very close. Did Yaxley just do enough? It is very close. I, I think Yaxley edged it. Wouldn't be a howler either way, to be honest, but I think after a torrid start, I think he did really well to, co to recompose himself take the play away from Gethin for, for large spells in the middle rounds but like I say you know there, there were several rounds as we mentioned earlier that were spring rounds you wouldn't be surprised if they if they went the other way and uh, great to see the respect between the fighters after a hard battle both boxers are going around the ring saluting their fans and it's been you know let's give credit to the crowd we've had two strong sets of fans here but it's it's been in the spirit you want it to be in. Yeah, really good natured atmosphere here. Both fans getting really behind their man, but no hint of trouble or animosity. I don't think anyone could get too angry when you've got Brandon Scott running around as Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brandon Scott, the infamous Brandon Scott making a cameo appearance on Keenan Gethin's ring walk. These are the nervous moments for the boxers as the scorecards get collated. I think we have a result with the results you've just been handed to our MC for the evening, Ricky Wright. If you just look at the body language of the two fighters now, it looks yaxi, looks the more confident. Not that you can read into that anything at all. And before the, the result is announced, we both got to say what a, what a really good fight. Credit to both boxers for taking this. Both of them could have gone different directions in their career. But instead, they chose to fight each other and put this brilliant fight on for all these fans here tonight. And you wouldn't argue against a rematch either way, Kieran? No, a rematch, definitely, yeah. But, ja but Jamie Evans on the undercard earlier has got one eye on the winner. There are a couple of other boxers around this weight class, but... If we saw a repeat of that again, we'd have no complaints at all. The referee calls the fighters. Ricky Wright is ready to announce the decision.